Hello, artists. So today we are talking about an artist named Jen Stark, and she's a contemporary artist that does things all over the world. Um, she's really popular right now. She's an LA-based artist. She's done things for the MTV Movie Awards, for the Facebook headquarters. She's an abstract contemporary artist that is really, really cool. She uses like rainbow colors, and her big thing is how colors play with each other and color theory and how that can give a psychedelic almost movement to her pieces. So um, attached to this assignment, there's a video interview with Jen Stark. I highly suggest you watch that. It's really cool. Um, JenStark.com. You can see some of her stuff. So we're going to be inspired by her drip paintings. And I think that's what she's the most famous for is creating these murals on buildings that look like rainbow and black and white drips going down. So I thought we can make our own mural here at school. And I know you're at home, so in the office, I have several sheets of really big paper for you. And if you're not comfortable coming to school to get this, just try to work as big as you can. Um, we're working 18 by 24. Your class is actually working on the floor to do this project because our desks aren't big enough. So you'll need really big white paper. You can come to the office and get it. I gave you three sheets. You need at least two, but I gave you one in case you have an oops and you need extra. Um, the extra sheet can also help you protect a surface as well. You need a pencil and you'll need a Sharpie for today. Um, and that's gonna get us started. You're gonna do two, like I said. One, I want your orientation of your paper to be vertical, so it's taller than it is wider. And the other one, I want it to be horizontal, so longer than it is tall. And I know you're not gonna be able to see my entire paper. I just want you to kind of go with it. So when you think of a drip, it's just like a wavy line. So I like to start in the middle and just kind of make a wave line. Kind of looks like a W. And then you want to take about two or even three fingers spacing and kind of follow and mimic that line, leaving kind of a wide spot. You don't want them too close together. And that was the biggest probably thing I said to this class when we were doing this with 5B is keep the spaces wide. So you're just gonna keep bringing this down and following that line, so you're following that drip. And if you wanna add another part to it, you can. So maybe I wanna bring this one out a little bit and I'm gonna add an extra bump maybe in here. You kinda of wanna mimic it, but you also wanna make it look like it's kind of oozing or coming down. So I told in class you need to have at least five. So one, two, three, four, you need at least one more. So this takes some time. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time, really. It just, you need to kind of wrap your mind around it. We are just doing one piece of the drip mural. Because what I want to do is I'm going to collect all of these, even you guys at home, and we're going to put it together on the wall of school so it looks like we're dripping paint down the wall at school. So it's going to be really cool. So the one I just did vertical is one, two, three, four, five. And that's max you have to, or minimum you have to do. If you want to keep filling your paper, you can. But you want to keep it kind of mirroring. So after you've done this one, turn your paper, get your new sheet of paper, and you want to have it going the opposite direction. So if this was a new sheet of paper, I'd start a new mural. Now some people, when they did their mural, they started and they did a crazy like big drip thing. And that's actually really cool. But this is a lot of space from the top to the thing, so you would just go in and add another drip in there. Just to give it breaking up that area, okay? And then you would keep going. So you need to do one vertical, you need to do one horizontal, get one that you're really happy with that has at least three fingers width between it. We don't want them too close together. You have five rows, and then you're gonna outline both pieces of paper with Sharpie. So when you're outlining with your Sharpie, the one in your art kit, remember, is really inky and it bleeds through, so you'll definitely wanna put something underneath your paper. And you're really today, it's just about outlining as neat as you can. Some people want to make these lines really thick. It's up to you. I am not doing the best job, it looks like, with getting my pencil. So after you've outlined, you want to erase any pencil that you can still see. And that's it for today. It, it's pretty simple today, but it did take the whole class period who did it with 5B. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. You can use your sketchbook and play around with making drips in your sketchbook before you go big. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. In class, we actually pulled out sketchbooks and practiced at the top of paper in the sketchbook before I gave them the big paper because I didn't want to waste it. But I trust you guys to do what you feel is right. 
get it all outlined. Do your best to take a picture of it for me. If it's not the whole piece, if you're using a scanner, I know that'd be really hard. Um, but do your best to get me a picture of both pieces and upload it to this assignment. And then next week, we will talk about how we're going to add color to these. All right. Good luck and have fun. I'll see you later.